What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. Now this is part two of this mini workbench build and it turned out fantastic. I'm really happy with how it works. Everything works perfect. It's a lovely working height now for the fine hand tool work. So if you haven't seen part one, make sure and go watch that. I'll leave links up here or down below. This one's gonna be a little bit of a longer one, so make sure grab yourself a beer, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, sit down, get comfortable. I'll take you through how I built this. I'm trying to get better at the editing. It's very hard to uh, concentrate on your work, get the shots to show you guys, explain and show. So bear with me, this will all come together eventually. But uh, yeah, without further ado, this is part two. just addressing these tens then i don't have too much to do, work to do with them the, the table saw has done most of it so i'm just cleaning off some of the high points just making sure they're nice and flat they don't have to be too smooth and um, you can see the saw marks in it this will all help with the gluing process as well it'll give the glue some a surface to bind to so we just want to make sure that we're fairly straight just clean off any of the really high spots that should do Ideally, a shoulder plane or a rebate plane would be ideal for this one that the blade comes all the way to the edge. It's very, very handy. Actually, I think my next purchase might be a, a shoulder plane specifically for this type of work. And then I'm just going to knock back down to our shoulder line. So our shoulder line is just here. So uh, again, using these ashy oil chisels, they're pretty good. I quite like them. So we're just going to work back down to the shoulder line. So less is more as always when working with these things. So we're gonna take about half a mil at a time. Again, just take your time with this kind of stuff. I like to hold the chisel down nice and low for this kind of work, just gives you a little bit more control and uh, just try and ensure that you're perpendicular to your work. Just tap that down to your shoulder or down to your tenon. And we just walk back to our shoulder line then, just taking a small bite each time, the smallest bite you can take. There we go, we're just back to our line now. Okay, that should do the finest. We're back to our line there now. And so I'm just gonna repeat this for all four sides on the both of my tenon pieces. So I shall do that and I'll get back to you. Right, we're gonna mark out uh, our cuts for our, what's gonna be essentially like a bridal joint, kind of like a tenon. It's not really a bridal joint, it's not really a tenon, it's kind of a hybrid. So we're gonna go with it, but we're gonna use our actual piece to mark it. So, um, and what I'll do is I'm gonna number each side. So we will call that number one, number one, two, and two, just so we know that they match up. And I know that I need to be exactly 14 millimeters in from each side so that I'm dead center. And I am, so I'm gonna take my knife Just mark that. You might as well use the actual piece that you're gonna make the joint out of to mark out your joint. And then keep them to that side. You could just take a measurement. This is 20 mil thick, mark all these at 20 mil. But uh, as you know, when you're working with hand tools and uh, building stuff by hand, there's always little discrepancies. So if you match everything to ev every joint to every other joint, and every piece to every other piece and mark them that way. I find that usually works out the best. Okay, that's that one marked out. On top, flip this around, do the same on this side. Again, just ensure that I'm 14 millimeters in from my edge. Which I am there, I should be on this side, which I am. Hold it steady, 
and just use it to mark this. Then I can use these lines to set my marking gauge and mark down. Kidoki. So the next thing we want to do is mark our depth and we'll just again take our piece making sure that we're perfectly square. Mark that. So that's my line. Just mark it with a pencil so you guys can see it on camera hopefully. There we go. So that's my depth. Set my marking gauge then to my first line. So just get the blade to sit into your knife mark, which is right there. Tighten it up. And then I can scribe that down. Square this line all around. down this side. Again. I should just be in my line. I'm just barely out of it, so I'm going to adjust for this side. There we go. And then mark this line. stuff mark this side and that is our let's see if you can see that on the camera so you might not be able to see the knife marks there you are in the top so we'll mark all the way around using this piece to mark it out so we know we're good and uh, yeah that's it we're going to do that with all four of them now so we're going to make sure that we mark each tenon to each joint, we'll number them that way. We will use the piece to mark the piece, if you know what I'm saying, and that way we should be accurate. Okay, there's everything marked out for our last joint. So you can see I have everything labeled and numbered. Hopefully it's coming out on the camera. So we have one, one, and one. So we know this all goes together here. We have two, two, and two. Three, 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 four, four, and four. Just use every piece to mark its corresponding piece and uh, it should help with the accuracy. Because, like I say, working with hand tools, you can be a little bit out on this side, a little bit different to this side, and then just using those pieces to mark where you want to make your cuts can help just sort that out. That's all. So, again, I'm no expert on this stuff. This is just how I do it, take it or leave it. And, uh, yeah, let's crack on. We're going to cut these out now. And uh, that should be fun. Let's do that. Okay, we're just going to cut the slots for our joint now. Um, I've just marked the waist. So, there's nothing really to sawing. Uh, again, it's just a skill you develop. I'm not the greatest sawer in the world, but it's like everything practice makes perfect. I'm just going to be using the Japanese hand saws. They're very simple to use. I have my rip saw here. So um, all I do when I'm starting a cut, just make sure you're in on the waist side of the line. That's always important when you're cutting your joints. Don't cut on the line, just cut just inside the waist side. So always cut into your waist if you can. And just a little tip. So just when you're starting your cut then, get your thumb right up to it. Just establish your line on this side. Again, just establish your cut on this side. And then just let the two meet. That should establish a straight line across the top of your piece. And then it's just head on down, trying to keep it straight as you can. Don't have to press down too hard on these these japanese hand saws they uh, 
they kind of go down by themselves, so there's no real pressure required. Just check on the far side, make sure you're not going down past your line, which we're not. And there we go, there we go, nice straight cut. Again, it's just with anything, practice, take your time. Again, what I like to do, cut, make sure you cut the waist side of the line. Start, let's just establish our cut here, establish our cut on this side, and then just join the two up nice and easy across the top, and that should give you a good starting point to work your way down. And then just eye up your saw, try and keep it exactly perpendicular to your piece, and work your way on down. These Japanese hand saws, um, they're so thin, so easy to use. You get a nice straight cut with them. They pull themselves into tension. They cut on the pull rather on the push stroke. So some people find them easier to use. So uh, yeah, definitely check these out if you're having trouble sawing. Um, they're worth a look. So that's it. I'm gonna cut out the rest of these now and uh, I'll get back to you. There we go, one of my least favorite jobs is using this thing because it takes forever. And uh, I'm out of bread after that now. So, on to chiseling. Right, this is the same as before. So uh, just gonna use a chisel now. It's handy actually to have a chisel with a kind of a slab side on it, with a flat side just to reference the side of your joint. So uh, not so much the dovetails for this one, but um, these ones with a flat side on them are better. And again, it's just take your time, knock your piece out, knock halfway through, and then come from the other side. And put something down just to protect your table or your worktop so uh, you don't drive your chisel through your worktop. I've done it before, so uh, yeah. You can take a slightly heavier cut just to start with, and then we can take finer cuts when we get close to our line. Okay. That's more or less it, just a small bit of tidying up to do on it. So now obviously you can see my saw cuts weren't great on this one. So there's my line there. I'm just gonna pair this back to this line now. And I want my bench dog for that. Put this against it. And then it's a case of just walk to that line. Okay, let's see. So I'm more or less back to the line now. So I'm just gonna work the inside, do the same on this side, just get everything nice and squared up, clean it all out, get it nice and tidy. And I have to do this on all four pieces now. So let me do that. Everything else, is, they're all four will be the same as this. Um, and I'll get back to you. Okay, that's not too bad. That's all our joints cut and ready to fit now. Um, some are better than others. I will have to admit, I have slight little gaps here and there, but it's all a learning process. So uh, we get better as we go along. Remember, I'm no expert at this, so I'm just sharing what I'm doing. So if I make mistakes, maybe you guys don't have to. So uh, it's gonna be a case of start to assemble some of this frame now. And um, yeah, let's rock onto that. Okay, so I need to assemble these frames from the top down. So this is the part that my top of my workbench is gonna sit on. So I wanna screw these through the top of this for. So I need to get that done before I can fix this then up onto my worktop. So it's a case of drill two pilot holes, counter sink, get our glue in, and then screw these fellas in place. So uh, yeah, let's get on that. It's fairly straightforward. We're gonna do that with both of them.
hopefully you can see what I'm at here. It's hard to make videos, do all the editing and uh, try and think about the shots and try and think about what I'm doing at the same time. So. Everything's aligned. Let's get two screws down to the top of that then. Screw one is here. So that's the two of our frames glued and screwed. That's what our workbench is going to sit on. Now we can put in our, I suppose, our H-frame. Or can we? No, I have to fix this to the top. Then I have to fix the voice before I can drop in the H-frame on one side. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so here's where we're at. It's kind of hard to get all this in shot to try and explain the situation. But before I fix this guy to my top, I just need to line up my bent or my voice to see where everything is going to go. So I'm going to attach my voice using these coach bolts here and here. So I have to add two blocks inside. So they're going to go there like that so I can fix this guy too. So I just need to fix these to my top as well. Um, the main support will obviously be through this one. Uh, then I have to decide, okay, next thing I have to do, I have to take this notch out of this frame here. So when I put, let's just line this up, guy up, one and two. So one is on this side, two is on this side. So when I drive that down, I'm gonna have a problem with this guy. So I need to take a notch out of that, roughly about 15 mil, just a notch straight through the whole thing. Just allow it to sit down over that. So that needs to be done. And then if we look over this side, let me just move the camera in so we can explain this. I want to attach this guy to my top. So I'm going to glue it and I'm going to use coach bolts. So I'm going to count or sink these in just the depth of the head with a 10 mil washer, which I have here. So I get some, I've drilled two holes with two forstner bits just to let that the counter sink in and uh, I can drive that into the top then. So we don't need to go too deep, we need to really just go down the depth of the head. So I want to do that on that side as well. So before I take this apart again, I'm going to mark where my coach bolts need to go for my voice so that I can keep the ones to fix to my top out of the way and counter sunk underneath my voice. So yeah, that's it. So And then before I glue everything up, I need to sand everything. So I'm going to take the time now to sand all this, sand the top, top and bottom, and then stick this all together. So... I'll skip the sanding part, that's kind of boring. So let me get all the sanding done, let me get this back disassembled, and then we'll get ready for the final assembly when we come back. Right guys, we're almost on the home straight. I'm just gonna glue in this side because I can. I have to put the voice in before I can glue in the far side. bottle is almost empty. Upside down. Get some glue in these joints. go nice snug fit the gaps aren't too bad but we can do the old sawdust trick to fill the gaps yeah it's not looking too bad at all so just with the gaps if you end up with a gap in your joint or um, if it's not too bad just use the old sawdust trick and then plenty of sawdust rub it in there try and set it into the squeeze out just to 
just to fill it up. And then when you sand it, it's hardly even noticeable. It's just a little trick to hide your mistakes. But once it looks good in the finish and it's nice and strong, then who's going to know or who's going to care, right? Again, aim for perfection. We all fall short, but uh, we can try and make it look nice anyway. Okay, so that's that side glued in. Now I have to attach the vise. So there you go, that's that little gap filled. There we go. Hey guys, it is now day three, I think, on this build. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but uh, we'll see. I'll try and keep it as interesting as I can. So I had just, I think, finished up fin fitting the vise. So that's all fit now, and uh, I was able to remove it then, so we just pre-fitted. So we attached the legs just with the coach bolts. So I just countersunk the coach bolts with Forstner bits. Um, just make sure you leave the bit, the hole wide enough so that you can get your socket onto it. Don't just drill it the width of your head of your bolt like I did. I made that mistake and uh, I put the glue on. I went to tighten it up and of course I couldn't fit my socket in the hole. And so it was panic stations. Added to that, I've stabbed myself in the thumb with the chisel as well. So it's all been quite fun. But other than that, we're going pretty well. Our hedge frames are built. So we have our protruding tenons here, which we're just going to chamfer now with the hand plane. Just get a hand plane and we'll put little 45s on the corner. It's just for a little decorative piece. I like protruding tenons. I think they look great. But uh, yeah, it's good, solid and sturdy now. And I'm just waiting for the glue to just set on this leg over here. Then after the final sanding, I'll put the finish on it. We'll put the voice back on and then we will put the jaws in the voice. And then it's a case of drill the dog holes and we're done. So yeah, I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm never sure what to show and what to explain. But uh, hopefully it's all making sense. And uh, like I say, I'm no expert at this stuff. So uh, let's, I'll shut up now and like, we'll rock on. Right, just with our true tenons then, I just want to put a little de decorative sh chamfer on them. I'm just going to use my chisel. You can use a hand plane to do this. If you're going to use your chisel though, just be careful because your chisel will want to bite in and go deep. So just take a small bit off. Roughly at 45, you don't have to be exact. It's only a little kind of a decorative edge. Again, just keep your chisel shallow because it will want to just kind of pull itself into the material. And just watch when you get to the end that you don't break it out. So nice and easy, good sharp chisel. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Took a little bit too much out there, but we get it with the sander. So that's kind of what we're after. Just a nice little 45 degree chamfer all the way around the edge. I'm gonna do all four of them like that now, and then we'll sand it and finish it, and you'll see it on the finish. Okay. Right, guys, we're gonna drill out our dog holes now. Um, obviously, I wanna keep in past my frame, so I've come in 10 centimeters, 100 mil. I've come in 10 mil from this end, and then I've got three more spaces of 10 mil. So we have a dog hole at every 10 millimeters. So one, two, three, four, five dog holes in it. We're gonna drill them out with this 20 mil force in our bit. And I have some Veritas bench dogs here, which I'll be using with this bench and my main bench. So that's what we'll use. So uh, yeah, now ideally a drill press for this kind of work. So you're, you're keeping your drill bit exactly perpendicular and it doesn't wander too much, but uh, I don't have one of those yet. So it's just gonna be doing it by hand. So we'll just take our time and try and ensure that we're straight down. Straight as we can be anyway. Just 
just take your time with it. Often if you rush straight down into it, you can tear the top. And after all your hard work, you certainly don't want to do that. bit through. Right, that's one hole done. We're going to do the right other five just like that. Whew, that bit is hot. Flip it over and just have a quick look. All right, we got a tiny bit of break out there. So what I'm going to do is, once we pop through, finish our hole from this side. Onwards and upwards. Here we go, one of my favorite parts, applying the oil finish, because you're almost home and you get to see the wood kind of come alive. So um, yeah, just some boiled linseed oil and uh, this stuff is fairly easy to apply. You've seen me do this if you've been watching my videos a hundred times by now, so I'm not gonna say too much about it. It's just a case of dollop it on and wipe off the excess. It's always nice to see the grain pop out and the woods darken up. Gives you a sense of what it's going to look like. And that looks pretty good, in my opinion. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. There you go. Always find it therapeutic, rubbing the oil finish in. In grain can soak up a lot of oil, so you might want to get two or three, or three or four lots into the end grain. Um, two or three coats of this stuff is usually pretty good. It's all you need. If you feel you need more, you can add more. Just wait till it gets tacky, wipe off the excess, and then put on your next coat. That's all there is to it. It is literally that simple. It's a really lovely grain in this ash. It was a really nice piece of ash. It's actually the ash I made the guitars out of. Okay, let me get on with this and I'll get back to you. Okay guys, I have the voice back on. So the last job I have to do, the final job on this is just trim my bench jaws down a bit. So I've just, square them off with the width of my bench. I've marked them here and here. So I'm just gonna pull them out now. Just had screws to line them up. And I'm gonna take these to the chop saw and square off these ends. Let's do that.
there we go. The bench is now complete, all finished up. Voice is on, everything is nice and finished. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's good, flat, sturdy. It's just the right height for working, for doing some fine uh, tool work, uh, cutting dovetails, planing, that kind of thing. We have our dog system. We can set our dog up anywhere we want. Um, just drop in our piece. We have a dog on our voice. If you want to lock it in, bring them back, drop in your bench dog, and just wind it up. If you want to plane down that piece, then you can work away. It's a nice height. Working on our dovetails, drop them in. I can just lift the bench around like that and I can work from here so uh, yeah I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out there's a couple of things I might do differently and um, I might make another couple maybe to sell I would maybe put a moxon voice on rather than this big heavy voice it is a little bit oversized it does make the thing just a little bit cumbersome to lift up and down it's not overly heavy well it's an awkward weight so uh, yeah the idea is to make your life easier not a little bit harder so Voice is a little bit oversized and just a little bit heavy, so a Moxon voice would be really, really nice with one of these. But the ash frame looks great. I think the maple top looks great. The nice walnut stripe down the middle. I'm actually happy with how that turned out, despite not being the original plan. So yeah, that's it, guys. That's my new mini workbench for doing hand tool work at a nice working height. As always, comments and questions below. If you've made it to the end of the video, I appreciate it, guys. I appreciate the support. Hopefully, uh, this has been useful to you and might inspire you to go do a bit of woodworking too. And uh, that's it. It's been a long few days in work and in the shop, so uh, it's time for some beer. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Take it easy.